Hey, Michael, what are we making today? Oh, honey. Oh, oh honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> 2020 has been two things, a garbage fire that won't go out and a huge amount of free time. So I've watched a disgusting amount of Drag Race and a little old YouTube series called Un. And last week when I decided to finally get around to learning X-Gen, I could think of no better asset to give it a go with than this drag queen Trixie Patel. In this video, I'll be going over the modeling process and then later on I'll probably do some videos about texturing and groom, but that will come later down the line. Honey. Cool, so let's get started. So this started off as a project on one of my live streams over on Twitch, which is why you're gonna see this border for a fair bit of it, including the chat and me moving very quickly, so I apologize in advance. So I'm starting off with a cylinder here and I'm just using the clay buildup brush as I usually do just to fill in the form and then I'm gonna start masking areas. So I'm making the legs there, for example, moving it down and just redynameshing as I go. So this is gonna be quite a quick video. I'm not really gonna be talking a huge amount about every single step that I'm taking, more just about my kind of philosophy when I approach this asset. Um, if you want a bit more detail, you can check out the Squirtle series because I did a very similar thing, but I talk about everything that I'm kind of doing and teach along the way. So here I'm just filling in that back section, making sure it's a drag queen, so it needs a button, it needs boobs, which is what I'm blocking in there. So I'm gonna use these spheres for the arms, which isn't something I thought I was originally gonna do, but I've used them for arms before and I've found that they're especially good for fingers with Dynamesh because you can just get really solid shapes that are round, which is quite difficult to do if you're just kind of extruding or using the clay build up, which is often what I find myself doing. Originally, I'm just doing three fingers on the hand. Don't worry, I do know there's five fingers on a hand, but originally I thought this was gonna be similar to one of my ZBrush kind of clay Bob's Burgers sculpts I've done before. However, I ended up making it less stylized and more like a Barbie, which is something I'll discuss later on. So that's why it starts off like that, but I'll fix that later. So for the head, I've just started off with a sphere and used mask to bring something out for the neck. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool, the clay build up to try and block in these proportions. I'm gonna say up front, I'm not that great at facial proportions. I get there in the end, I think it looks okay, but you're gonna see it looks a bit like a potato for quite a long time. And the only way I fix that is I keep going back to it. I work out what's wrong. I look at the ref, which is always off screen. I also have this really cool head 3D model that's like this resin thing from 3D Total, which is really useful to see that form in real life in 3D, so I could kind of move it around and compare it to that. One thing I found really useful was getting the eyes in early because then you just have a spherical form that you can kind of model around. I wanted these eyes to be quite big because it was gonna be stylized, but it just gave me a really good base to work from. So I recommend doing that if you're sculpting a head. So yeah, you can see it's very flat. The eyes aren't far back enough. The back of the head looks, incredibly flat and um, there's a lot to a lot to tweak but slowly but surely I chip away at it and I will get there. Those people that can make heads in 30 minutes, hats off to them. I don't do heads enough. I will get there one day hopefully and I would really like to be able to do it quicker but I'm just not there yet. It was also an interesting one as well because I wanted to take it stylized but hadn't really worked out what the stylization was going to be up front which was probably in hindsight a little bit stupid but because it was on stream I don't want to sit there sketching out things. Previous kind of clay sculpts I've done before, the Tobias Funke one and the Bob's Burgers ones, I had sketched out in a notebook beforehand so I knew exactly how the proportions were gonna be, but this I thought I'd do it a bit more on the fly, which is fine, but it just meant that it took a while to find its way. And then also it became something else. I took it more like a doll rather than those clay sculpts I've done before, because I thought it'd be a more interesting angle. So yeah, it changes a lot. Um, it does get there eventually, I think, but it's just worth mentioning, I think. So here I'm just using masking to pull out some forms that I can work with with the Dynamesh for the shoes. So she's got these big platforms on and what I'm doing is I'm just using the move tool to make sure that it's got a nice silhouette. It was a little bit crooked, it's not quite working. And then I'm just gonna fill in that bottom little platform bit and make the actual platforms afterwards. But I just wanna make sure the shape's kind of in there to begin with. So I flattened it off there using the trim and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask off that bottom bit and pull them down to get the platform shape so that it's consistent. And then I'm gonna work on the head. So for the head, what I'm gonna do is just mask off the scalp and then what I can do is extract that into a different subtool and then I can use that to just start playing with hair shapes. So again, it's all Dynamesh because then that way I can change shapes on the fly. I can add new bits as you can see me doing here. Yeah, and it's just a really great way to kind of sculpt things out, check how it's working. So I'm going from ref, which I've got off screen, but this shape doesn't really hugely matter. I just need a volume that I can work with with X-Gen, which is how I ended up doing the hair in the final thing. And when I've got something rough, then I can go back and add more details later. But for now, I just want to block everything out, make sure the form and the overall silhouette works. So final thing for this stream, I'm just going to add some color onto the eyelids. Trixie Mattel's makeup is kind of one of her defining features. So I just need to get that black in there just to see how the kind of face shape is working, if it is working at all. So yeah, cool. So here we're picking up on a second stream and I actually had a bit of a brainwave over that night. I've watched a disgusting mountain drag race and uh, over lockdown, which is a, 
a YouTube series you should absolutely Google and watch. It's hilarious. But Trixie Patel is obsessed with dolls. So I thought, you know what, if I'm doing a Trixie, why not make it like a Barbie doll? Because she's already, her name is named after Mattel as in Barbies. And I thought it would just be a really cool way to finish off this asset. I can still do hair, but it'll be really fun to do the textures and the scale of a doll. As you can kind of see in the final thing, the hair is a lot thicker. You've got that textural detail of like fabric and stuff. And I found that really fun to do. So first things first, I need to add a pinky finger because it's not going to be a four fingered hand. It's going to be five because it needs to look like a Barbie. Things are going to change and I need to add things like folds in the arms, all this. So this stream, I'm going to address that and just have a look at some more things. So first up, I'm doing the fingers here. One thing that I really find helps if your fingers feel a bit sausagey, just go to the back and really get in the form of the individual bones and the, the kind of fat mounds, the fatty pads on the back of your fingers and the folds. And that will just really help bring them to life a little bit and get the form in there a bit more. It's something I always struggle with and I find that always helps. Here, I'm just isolating the different fingers, make sure that they're thin enough to begin with. They were really thick in depth, but they were kind of perfect front on, but from the side, they just looked way too thick. So here I'm just splitting off the hands from the wrist and what I'm gonna do is this way I can just get an articulation point the way that dolls kind of have obviously at their joints if they can move then they've got these points of articulation so that was one thing I really wanted to get in. So when I've got that on the wrist I'm gonna do that on the arm as well. You don't actually end up seeing this because the dress is on top but it was fun to do and what I'm using is ZBrush's Live Boolean feature which is really really awesome and I could just drop in this sphere and use it to kind of eat away the points and then that way I can just go in with the move tool afterwards and clean it up, get a slightly nicer silhouette, get a bit more of a curve and voila. So for the knees, I'm gonna do a slightly similar thing. I'm gonna trace a mask for the knee joint and then just split these sub tools out, redynamesh them to get them to close up. And then what I can do is add a sphere in there to also live boolean it because that's the kind of ball joint that I'm imagining that it sort of rotates around. And then I've got a fairly simple knee joint and I can go in later and kind of clean that edge up because it's quite messy at the moment using the high polish brush and stuff like that. But for now, this looks pretty nice and I'm just trying to kind of block in those details, make sure that it all works in general. So I've got this blocked out section of the body and I'm gonna turn this into this dress that she's wearing. So what I'm gonna do is just start carving into it a little bit, add some sleeve detail, and fill in the thigh gap so it's actually more of a dress and then I can just add the seams and stuff and I'm going to actually retopologize that in Maya. Why am I going to retop it in Maya? Well that way I can actually add my own kind of topology and edge loops for the seams which will just make it a little bit nicer and when I subdivide it just kind of keep shape a little bit better. I've done a fair bit of digi double clothing at Dineg and having nice topology and nice UVs is really really important it just helped the texturing process so much. So yeah just blocking it in making sure that it's all working. And I can go in and add folds later on. For now, I just wanted to get the whole thing kind of working in general. The collar I'm actually gonna do in Maya because it's gonna be really thin. When If I re meshed it, then it would just fuck up the mesh. So I'm gonna do that when I re-topologize it. So now I'm just gonna add some folds into the boots. There's a little bit of detail there. Nothing too major. And I do come back to this later on. So I think that is about the end of this second stream. So next we're gonna go to some footage where I was just doing this my own time and no longer do you have to stare at my picture in the bottom left hand corner moving at 800% speed. Cool so first up I'm just going to take another look at this dress I'm going to do some folds I'm going to add in all the seams that I need and then when I've got this back in Maya ready to retopologize I know where I need to put all these landmarks so just blocking this in even if it's not clean doesn't matter I just want the shape there to line up to when I retopo it. So mainly the seams if there's any pockets or anything like that, if I were doing pockets, then I would want to get that in. You can see I also get down the button line on the front of the shirt because that's really important that I want to line that up and just those general things. Don't quite get it the first few times, so try and try again. And there's also a little belt detail that I'm just adding in there, which I end up making as a separate object, but just simpler to do it here I found. Then I can hide those arms just to get the seams down the side and then just using the basic retopology tools inside of Maya. If you don't know about this, they're really easy to use. Again, I'm just gonna plug it again, but in my Squirtle series, I go through creating a character from scratch in ZBrush, go through all the retopology kind of aspect of it and everything in a lot more detail than I'm doing here. This was just a quick project that I don't wanna dwell on too much. So I thought I'd make a few quick videos. If you want a bit more in detail, then you can check out the Gumroad for that. So here I've got edge loops for all my seams and then that way my UVs will also be set up to the same way that the patches of how this object will be created in real life are and it just makes UVing it easier, texturing it easier but also the details now line up better than they would if I had just used ZBrush inside a ZBrush. 
So finally for the collar, I'm just gonna block something in on the same mesh and I'm just gonna merge it with what I've already got. I need to make sure all the edge loops and stuff line up obviously, but I can just extrude inwards and then bridge that all together quite simply. And then it's ready to go back into ZBrush. So I'm just taking another stab at the hair because this is what I'm gonna be using as my guide for my guide curves. Say that 10 times quickly, but yeah. So I'm just using the Orbs Cracks brush. These are some that were recommended by Tom Newbury in his Hair X-Gen course that um, helped me get up and running with the tools of X-Gen. I used to be a groomer years ago at NPC, but I haven't done it in a while, so I don't know how to use actual X-Gen. So this was a brush set that he recommends and I found them really useful for getting hair. And I'm just getting the overall flow of the locks in as per the reference. So they're kind of wavy down the bottom and then I could just carve into it with the clay build up and re mesh it as I go. All I need, it doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to look amazing because this is just to set up the guide curves it doesn't need to look good. I'm not going to render it. So when that's all good, I'm going to start adding some folds into the dress detail of this, which is going to be really useful when I take it into substance. These bakes will be great for curvature and things like that for the smart materials and materials that I set up in that. Michael, why did you texture in substance? Many reasons. I thought this asset would be nicer to do in substance than Mari. I'm also trying to learn a bit more substance these days because Honestly, Mari's too expensive in the long run, and if I don't need to use it, and Udims are great, and I don't have to use Mari for everything, then I might as well try using Substance for a few more things, and I'm actually really happy with the result that I got on this. It was a little temperamental at times, especially with projections, but I managed to get it all working. I still use Mari for some things, but I'm going to try using Substance a little bit more in my workflow these days. So I'm going to take another stab at the face. This is something that's really going to make or break it, so I just want to take another look at this try and get some of those proportions a little bit better. It's a really difficult one because especially when you're starting at reference with this, when they're caked in makeup and the eyelashes for Trixie are so large, it's really difficult to work out what should and shouldn't be sculpted, which I know sounds really stupid. Thankfully, there's some reference of Brian, the guy's real life name, um, out of drag, so you can kind of see that, which was helpful, but just not enough reference. And again, not that great of faces, which didn't help. So here, just adding some more fat onto the cheeks. This forehead feels too slanted. The back of the head doesn't feel quite right. So I'm just having another look at the anatomy of this, make sure the shape is there. Granted, it's covered by a giant wig, so you don't really see it, but it was a point of pride at this point that I got the face looking a bit more human. And again, I know the eyes are too large in real life. They would be scaled down, but because I was doing a doll, I wanted to have really large eyes. And because Trixie's whole thing is these giant eyelashes, the bigger the eyes, the bigger the eyelashes can be. So yeah, that was my reasoning for that. A drag queen needs nails, so the hands need nails. So just gone in, taking another stab at the hands, trying to get some details in there for the nails that I can paint on top of. And also I do just take another stab at the shape of these. Gonna really try and get in the sort of fat pads, the different folds between the fingers. The head palm also is feeling very flat at the side, so I can just kind of go in, use the age polish on that and kind of curve it a little bit more. So here, this is what I was saying earlier. If you just carve in some of those details, it can really help get rid of sausage finger effect, which is something that my hand sculpts often have. They're not perfect by the final thing, but because this was just a doll, then I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, this is a short-term project. I don't want to spend months in it like Squirtle. Let's just get on with it. So when I'm happy with everything, I'm going to retopo it. I retopoed the shirt inside of Maya. Everything else I'm going to do inside of ZBrush. So there, I was just putting down some Z guides for Z Remesher and everything else didn't really need guides. I just wanted the facial topology to be fairly consistent to what production topology would be for that. So the loops around the mouth, etc. Again, if you want more information on that in my Squirtle series, I go through that in a fair bit more detail. So I've taken it back here into Maya. I used UV Master inside of ZBrush to give me some really quick and dirty UVs. And then what I'm going to do is just clean that up a little bit inside of Maya, get Udim ready, ready to take into Substance, which now does Udims, which is great. And yeah, then I'm sort of ready to go, ready to texture, which will be addressed in the next part of this series. So cool, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. If you do have any questions, then as always, we've got the Discord. Uh, you can put me a message over there. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I've got to say. If you want any more in-depth stuff, check out my previous videos, or you can check out that Squirtle series where I go through modeling, retopology, texturing, all of that jazz for the Squirtle. But yeah, take it easy. Best of luck, whatever you're doing in 3D. Um, I'll be Michael Wild. Have a good one.